and welcome to my podcast. Today, I have John DeVoe. He's a senior product manager for Mason Ewan, a Baker Hughes business. John, welcome to my podcast. Thank you, and it's great to be here, Bill. Hey, um, John, we're going we're gonna to talk about one of your favorite products in mine today, the Mason Ewan CamFlex. And um, hey, folks, for the folks watching this today, hang on because there's not a lot of information about how a CamFlex actually works out there. I checked. So we're going to do a neat little deep dive with John on, on the inner workings of the CamFlex. Um, John's been with Mason Ewan literally out of school. John, just real, real, give me a real quick bio on that because I think you literally, <laughs> and I, I remember these days, man, you literally answered that in the paper, right? That's how you got the job? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. When I graduated, which is a long time ago, 30, <laughs> more than 35 <laughs> years ago, um, there, I, I happened to graduate at a time where there wasn't a huge amount of opportunities out there. There was no recruiting on campus going on. We were kind of in a recession. And I was looking for an opportunity in, in the instrumentation and control field, which is what I had studied. And I did answer an ad. It was for a valve assembler. Uh, Mason Elon of Canada Limited, and uh, entered that ad, got that job, um, worked worked in our in in assembly and manufacturing, assembling product for a couple of years, and uh, also had the opportunity to do field service for a number of years, which took me to a lot of customer sites and and different countries, um, before moving into roles in inside sales, engineering. Um, product technical support and and today product management. So it's been a an interesting uh, interesting career path. Wow, I mean, uh, we I guess we would consider you a a well rounded individual with Mason Ewan. <laughs> <laughs> I I think so, probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Hey, um, and you know what? In today's world, you don't. I mean, it's it's hard to find men and women who literally are still with the same company from 35 years ago. I mean, that's quite a career path, John. Um, congratulations, because you've lived through, you know, a lot of changes at Mason Nealon and, uh, and you've had a lot of different roles. And um, it speaks to the fact that you're now a senior product manager for several different layers of products. Um, you know, what you've been able to accomplish with, with Mason Nealon. Um, so, hey, let, let's go CamFlex. And, and again, one of the things you and I talked about in our little pre-meeting is in today's world, and, it, and it's a rep, it's like people say, you know, I need a two-inch cam flex. Okay, I'll get you a quick cam flex, we inventory, blah, blah, blah. And, and what we talked about was the fact that there may be quite a few engineers out there who really don't know how a cam flex works. So that's what today's goal is, is to talk about how a cam flex works. And um, I mean, gosh, there's... There's over 1.2 million cam flexes out in the world today in the field. Eastern Controls, we inventory close to $4 million of product from Mason Nealon at in Edgemont PA. And half of our inventory is with cam flex, close to $2 million, around $2 million of inventory is with cam flex. So we sell a lot of cam flex valves out of Eastern Controls. So let's go there, John. You're the product manager. You've got a couple slides. Um, let me let you run the show and, and let, let's let's show these folks how CamFlex works. Sure, thank you. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, you know, Eastern Controls inventory is a lot of CamFlex. You know, that shows the importance of the product line to your customer base. Obviously, you know, you inventory what, what your customers want, what they need, and, and that's what that's there to support. So, you know, nobody keeps inventory on the shelf if people aren't buying it and you're not able to, to, to use it today. So it's, it's very important to note that. Um, yeah, the CamFlex valve, you know, I, I don't want to bore everyone with uh, you know, too many slides, but I do have a few I'll pull up. Um, but just a little background, you know, CamFlex has been around since 1968. You know, the first generation of CamFlex was introduced in 1968. And, and it was the first eccentric plug um, rotary control valve, rotary globe control valve, and and that's that's how we we talk about it as a rotary globe valve. And I'll explain a little more about why and, and how it works like a globe valve, a conventional globe valve. Um, but you know, at the time it was introduced, rotary valves were either ball or butterfly valves. There wasn't 
other types of, of rotary valves. So the Camflex was designed to be kind of a first in that generation, that type of product, something different in the market. And it was it had a goal of being able to replace approximately 80% of the typical the conventional control valves that were in service in use uh, at the time. And, and it's proven to be able to do that over the years. So the you know we redesigned it over the years. You know the, the product we sell today is called the Camflex 2. It's an update of that original design, but it kept the same eccentric plug, um, spring and diaphragm actuation. All of the features that made the original Camflex so successful were maintained in that that redesign with some improvements along the way. So let me just uh, just share a couple slides, a few slides, sorry, and uh, it's all right. uh, go from there. Um, so hopefully this comes up. Um, uh, so this slide is just showing a, a conventional, traditional globe control valve. Um, so you know, when you look, at, when you think about a conventional globe valve, there's there's some different styles of them, different trim types, but this is probably the most uh, basic type. And in a globe valve, you know, the the plug and stem move up and down as as the valve is controlling, and you can see that the plug itself doesn't contact the seat ring until it's actually closing, until it's asked to close. So while it's throttling, there's no friction between the, the, the plug element, the plug portion of it, and the seat ring. It's simply moving up and down. There is a little bit, obviously, between the plug and the guide, whether it's a bushing or a cage, but the throttling portion of it isn't rubbing on anything. And, and that's, that's important to remember because in other rotary valves, you often have a plug or a ball or a vein or disc that's rubbing on a seal ring throughout much, all or much of its rotation. So you've got that additional friction that prevents it from being able to throttle really smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, so in Camflex, mm -hmm. we took that, that same feature, that, that uh, uh, plug, con uh, plug to seat contact method, and, it, and it's, it's a cone into a cone. So you've got an angled seating surface on the plug mating with an angled seating surface on the seat ring. And that ensures that you know, the plug can move smoothly in and out of the seat, but still maintain, still get good shut off, very tight shut off every time it closes. Um, it has you know, no um, seat contact until it's fully closed. Camflex really has the same kind of a plug um, effect. You know, we've taken that that cone into cone seating, but through a double offset design in the plug, we've allowed it to work the same way. The plug doesn't contact the seat ring until it's asked to close, until it gets that last portion of its closing. And then after it shuts, after it closes and touches the seat ring, there's some additional um, plug arm flex, which is the other part of the name, uh, that that allows the plug now to go a little bit deeper in contacting the seat ring to align itself fully with that seat ring and get that very consistent tight shut off. So we have the, the frictionless control where we're, when we're throttling, there's no friction between the plug and seat ring. So you get very accurate throttling control, the same as you would get from a, a traditional or conventional globe style control valve. And then you've got the benefits of the rotary motion for um, that really tight shut off, lower actuator forces, and, and other things we're going to talk about. So it, this is just to show that we take we took that sliding stem globe style control valve and just converted it into a rotary motion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here's here's showing the the plug action itself. So as I talked about, you know, it's a double offset. So the plug face is offset in two directions from the shaft center line. So as the the valve opens and closes as it opens it's going to move the plug face very quickly away from the seat ring and then rotate so that's the cam action that that we derive the camflex name the first part of the camflex name from and you can see there's no rubbing between the plug and the seat ring uh, it's very low friction because you're only going to have the frictional forces from the the guide bushings on the on the shaft and a little bit from the packing but that's still much less than you would see in a conventional globe valve where you typically have a lot more packing friction than you will in a, in a rotary motion valve like Camflex. Um, the, the second part of the action 
is the the flex part of the name. So as I mentioned, you know, the, the plug is designed so that it, it will contact the seat ring on the trailing edge. So in this view, the top edge of the plug touches first. And then the plug arms, which the arms are this portion of the plug, if that shows on screen. Yeah, I can you know, see, as your, it, see your cursor a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So as, as the, the shaft continues to rotate a little bit, those arms flex. And it's a very small amount, but it's enough that it now gives you that full alignment between the plug face and the seat ring. It gets very, very tight shot off now because the plug centers itself as it closes, but it also allows for very smooth opening and closing because you get no jumping in and out of the seat. Um, you know, there's the unbalanced forces are, are very low, so it rotates in and out very smoothly. And you get very consistent long-term uh, both control and shut off. Um, the lack John, of friction. John, you can you just just do me a favor? Just move your cursor over that arm one more time to show the person watching this. Okay, there's real slow. So this yeah, part okay. is the plug arm here. There it is. Um, okay. This is the plug face, obviously. Plug arm. This is the center line of the shaft. Is back here, where and so you can see we've got an offset upward in this direction, and then another offset in this direction over to where the seat ring is. Got it. Okay. So watch the plug arm section here as it as it rotates. You know, there's some flexing going on here, and this isn't the most sophisticated animation here in PowerPoint, but it's just trying to show that that face can flex then into the seat ring and get that really consistent tight shut off. Got it. Um, you know, one of the other things that happens with valves is, you know, as as valve particularly as valves get larger, you end up with larger actuator sizes. So the as the actual you know the force requirement within the valve increases proportionally to the pressure drop through the valve, and in a conventional globe valve you really have you know a one to one ratio of forces. So whatever the unbalanced force is in the valve acting on the plug, you have to counter that with actuator force. Um, so when you get into particularly in larger sizes and higher pressure drops, you can get some really large forces involved in, in conventional globe valves, which drives then a really large actuator size. And you know that at actuator size, these, these valves typically operate using instrument air. So you're loading air in and out of that actuator case. And the bigger the volume, the longer it takes to load and unload. So that, that loading and lo unloading time, that that dictates how quickly the valve can respond to a change in process conditions or a change in signal and and affect its dynamic response you know you want the valve to track your process very very closely very accurately and very quickly to keep the process in control um, the way the camflex is designed with the combination of that double offset and then the the uh, long travel rotary actuator we have a three to one force multiplication that's happening through the lever systems. So you've got, you know, in, in with the Camflex plug and actuator design, the actuator only has to put out, it only requires one third of the force to stroke that valve compared to an equivalent conventional globe valve. So that allows for a much smaller actuator size, which improves that dynamic response and, and just general speed of response for the valve. It also reduces the air consumption per per stroke, per cycle, um, and, and just gives you a really fast but accurate um, tracking of the process, tracking of the, the desired set point. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it's done using a, a spring and diaphragm, a rolling diaphragm actuator design. So you still get all the sensitivity that you expect from a spring and diaphragm actuator. You know, in, in most control valves, um, spring and diaphragm actuators are still preferred because they provide the most sensitive, the most, the finest control compared to pistons and other other rotary designs, other actuator designs. So, you know, you get that, but you get it in a small package, a very small size. Uh, <clears throat> you know, today we see more and more focus on on emissions. You know, emissions, um, VOCs fugitive emissions, various terms that, that people use to describe it, but really it's around uh, making sure we're not leaking um, hazardous material, uh, greenhouse gases, other things into the atmosphere. And 
So there's more and more emphasis on it, and there's a number of inter different standards regionally that that can be referenced. Um, but many of the applications where valves are used are throttling or controlling hazardous materials, whether it's just you know, products in, in refineries, uh, chemical plants, uh, even even some other industries where you're using you know, gas as a uh, fuel for heating and things like that. You don't want to be leaking that to the atmosphere. So in, in, in general, a rotary valve provides tighter shafts or stem sealing compared to a reciprocating valve or, or, or a conventional globe valve. You know, in, in conventional globe valve, the shaft or the stem is moving up and down through the packing. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to it's going to pull contaminants from either inside the valve or outside the valve through that packing box, that packing um, system. And and it takes more force on the, the packing to seal tightly when you're when you're sliding a stem through it uh, in and out. Uh, in a rotary design, you know, the, the shaft rotates in place. So there's, you know, you're not pulling any contaminants into the packing system. It rotates. Um, the rotating motion is a lower friction to the packing compared to a sliding stem motion. Um, so there's much less packing wear in general. So even, even valves without low emission packing systems will seal, a rotary valve will seal tighter than a, than a reciprocating or sliding stem. Um, in Camflex, we've added, or we, it's been standard for quite a number of years now, what we call our EF seal, which is a double O-ring sealed uh, packing follower, which has proven to uh, meet or exceed actually the, the um, ISO 15848 and the, e the US EPA uh, requirements for, for sealing. Um, in fact, today we've, we've got a version of this packing system that now, um, I think believe the emissions requirement are less than 50 parts per million is typically the the uh, the standard. We've got a version that's that's less than one part per million uh, in typical tests. So it's a a really tight system. Um, that's like I said, the standard packing system that comes in every Camflex is a low emission packing system. Um, and and in addition to that, because of how the body is designed, there's no gasket joints between. You know, the, a bonnet and a body. The the bonnet is really integral to the body. It's called it's one piece. So you you eliminate that leak path. And I think people focus on packing as being the biggest leak path, which it often is. But it's all all leak paths need to be considered. So that includes all the gasketed joints. So if you eliminate a gasketed joint, you eliminate another potential leak path. Yeah, great point, John. Great points. Um. <clears throat> this one is showing uh, one of our newest um, additions to the product line, which is the Camflex GR is really designed around providing a customer the ability to replace a conventional globe valve with a Camflex valve without having to make any piping modifications. Bingo. Um, the standard Camflex valve that we've produced for many years has been a shorter face-to-face -face dimension than a traditional globe-style control valve which meant if a customer wanted to upgrade from a globe to, to Camflex, they had some additional space they had to make up now in the piping. Um, and the, the typical way of doing that was with, with a, spool be, a spool piece. Spool piece. And, yeah. <laughs> and we, most of us, most of our, our reps and channel partners could provide that or produce that, uh, but it required an additional piece that had to be bolted in. And a spool piece is just a small section of pipe with a couple flanges welded to it. That now get bolted in to make up that that difference. With the Camflex GR, we added another body version that is longer, so it now matches the face to face of the the traditional globe. Um, so that eliminates the need for the spool piece. It makes it a simpler transition from a globe uh, to a Camflex. And and here also should point out that you know obviously in the picture those two valves are the same size same line size, but you can see the Camflex is much smaller. And that's that's a lot of that is due to the smaller actuation that's required, or, or rather conversely, the larger actuation that's required on the conventional globe. Um, so that smaller actuator package allows, you know, the Camflex will, to fit in applications, in all virtually all applications where a globe valve would have been in service originally. It, it's half the size, half the, half the height, half the weight, 
um, of a, a conventional globe. And then we also have the feature that allows the actuator to be positioned in one of four quadrants. So, you know, for air for a fail closed valve or an air to close air to open valve, you can orient the actuator in four different positions, which now allows more flexibility again to accommodate or to uh, eliminate interference with other obstructions or other piping that might be nearby. You know, we like to think that the installations always have you know six or eight feet all around them, so you can work easily and. And that just, it's just <laughs> always it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> no, so that that act, the ability to rotate the actuator through those four different quadrants just gives that that additional flexibility for those replacements. Uh, and and here's here's an installation where one of our our um, our representative companies worked with a customer to replace. Uh, a globe valve that was causing us some problems. So on the on the left side, you can see the conventional globe. Um, it's obviously an older product that was in there that they wanted to upgrade. Uh, and then, and you can also see this is actually a very clean installation. There's lots of space around that valve. Uh, but as I said, often there'll be you know, overhead rest uh, restrictions, um, some other equipment around that makes it very tight. Uh, but you look at the right hand picture where now the same installation with the camflex valve installed and you can see how you know there, there's lots of room around it uh, the valve went in easily you can position it such that you can almost you can always get clearance between the other devices and and just makes it a very clean installation i should also note you know look at the positioner that's on the top of the the camflex valve so that's our our digital position, our, our SVI 2 AP uh, product. Mm -hmm. um, the position is on the traditional globe on the left is a very large uh, positioner that's connected to the dam using some linkage. So that there's different linkage components to get the actual feedback of the, that stem position. On the way the Camflex is designed, the positioner mounts directly to the front of the actuator connects directly to the valve shaft. There's no linkages involved. So you don't get that potential lost motion or looseness that, that can happen over time with positioner linkages. So you always know you're getting the true feedback of where that valve plug is. So again, all around getting the most accurate control, the, the highest sensitivity so that the valve responds consistently to the signal, to the position you need it to be in. Uh, so, man, that, that nailed it. That was, man, go ahead. I, I, I know you're going to, but John, that, that's excellent going over the Mason Hill and Camflex. That was really good. Those were the slides I wanted to show. Wow, that's, that's great. I mean, hopefully that provided some some insight to our customers. You know, there's there's lots more, a lot of more benefits to the Camflex. It was, you know, the thing, it lasts for forever. Um, we, we provide it as standard with a hardened trim. So it's either uh, 316 with a hard faced uh, stellite hard facing on it um, for very long service life. You know, you, you we again, you we often think services are, are easy and always clean fluids. Um, that unfortunately is not always the case. And even some pretty basic services like Steam, you know, we, low pressure steam. People assume that that's easy to control. Yeah, you know, it doesn't cost. You know, it's not, not that harsh. And in reality, if you get any leaks with uh, steam when you're controlling on steam, if you have any leakage around the seat or between the plug and the seat, you know, you're going to get what they call wire drawing, where it just erodes the base metal away. Uh, particularly stainlesses, you know, 300 stainlesses will erode very easily with steam. So. Having a hard face surface on it just provides that that longevity. Uh, we also awesome do, control valve on steam. Awesome control valve on steam. Definitely. We also have versions for erosive service. You know uh, where we provide everything up to uh, ceramic trim. You know for highly erosive applications, and it's proven to be a very durable valve on on erosive services. We use Camflex or a customer of uses Camflex on geothermal applications. It's again a modified trim, but basically the same valve. And you know, in geothermal, you've got everything in the fluid. It can be everything up to bits of rock coming through with that, that wow. 
that fluid. So very, very uh, durable product, lasts a lifetime, kind of literally, um, yeah. and, and low maintenance. You know, the compared to many conventional globe cell valves, customers don't have to take apart the Camflex very often because it just continues to, to work. And, and that's what it was designed to do. You know, that's the whole purpose around it was to provide a customer with a better alternative to a, a traditional globe, a more economical product because you know, also, you know, size and weight cost money. You know, when you're making metal or you're pouring metal and machining metal, the larger it is, the more expensive it is. So with the smaller size of the Camflex overall, lighter weight, that means less metal, less steel, less whatever involved. So lower, lower cost and that, and that's passed on to the customer. So they yeah. get a more durable valve at a lower, a lower purchase price and, a, and more importantly, a lower total cost of ownership over the life of the plant. And there are so many other things you could talk about on the Camflex. So, um, and to your point, and then we'll wrap things up here, but it's, it's, uh, you're right, low maintenance valve um, and uh, tremendous, tremendous control valve. Thank you so much for coming on and, and doing a deep dive. I think there was a tremendous value to this. Um, as the product manager, you, you hit all the major points, John. Um, folks who are watching this, remember that at Easter Controls, we're inventorying close to $4 million, $4 million worth of product, $2 million of it is Canflex. We have full shop capabilities. Uh, we inventory the positioners that John mentioned. And um, you know what? If you have a control valve requirement, you want to replace a globe valve, we've got the GR series that can be a direct inline replacement. You need a Canflex in a rush? Give us a call. Challenge us. We'll be here to help you. Give us a call anytime. Thanks again, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me.